Hey guys, apologies for my slightly shit appearance. Um, I had a migraine and am just recovering from it. So that's why I'm still in my pajamas. Um, but I thought I'd try some new lighting somewhere else in my house uh, just to compensate for you know the lack of good lighting in my room. So hopefully this works a little better. Tell me if you like this lighting better, and I'll try to uh, be in this room more when I'm making my videos. So anyway, today I wanted to respond, because I want to get back into the habit of doing response videos, to Nicole Arbor's video on depression. Now I know there's already a lot of responses on this, and this came out quite a while ago, but I thought I'd add my own input to the conversation. And I've decided to focus on my channel um, from on now is going to be dispelling myths and bad practices in psychology, um, as psychology is a big interest of mine, and I want to be able to con contribute somehow with my videos, um, whether that means educating about a certain aspect of psychology or dispelling myths and bad information. Um, so, let's just start with the video. Only one person can get you out of depression, and that is you. It's all in your head. It's all in your head. Oh no, I'm holding you accountable for your own feelings. There's a difference between feelings and depression. Depression is a medical condition. Feelings are just feelings. Um, and yes, you are accountable for your own medical condition in a way. You're accountable for treating it and having a good attitude of recovering. But other than that, you can't help actually having the condition. And for your own life. Holy fuck. Oh shit. Look at our lives. We have amazing technology. Grocery stores full of food. And seats that heat up your butt in the winter. Hey. Or if you're a genius like me, you turn on the heat seat and keep your fast food warm. Ah. And yet we are the most depressed that humans have ever been in the history of the world. Hmm. I like to see sources cited on that, on how um, we're the most depressed we've ever been. I mean... There could be several explanations for that, if that is true. One could be that we're just better at identifying and diagnosing depression because, you know, back when your grandparents were born, let's say, people didn't know as much about depression, so fewer diagnoses were made. Ha <laughs> on our head. Depression is a chemical imbalance in your head. You can't just fix it. The straw man she's doing, depression actually has been linked to chemical imbalances. It can... There's a variety of factors that can contribute to depression, but there are one of those factors is a lack of serotonin, or not a lack of a, def a deficiency in serotonin. So yes, depression can be a chemical imbalance in your brain, and you can do stuff to help fix it, but you um, you can't magically make it go away. But you can't. First, our brains are made of chemicals that are always changing balances. Sometimes when you have more of one chemical than another, then you can have depression symptoms. However, our brains are always changing, and we can change our brain. I think you're confusing neuroplasticity and the ability for the brain to change and heal with being able to think your way out of depression. They're not the same thing. It's You can't just magically think something and change your brain. It, it doesn't work that way. Hi, Jack Jack. That's my cat. Um, it doesn't it doesn't work that way. <laughs> what you say, what you say, what you say, what? Yeah, yeah. Do something fun. Get a nice hit of dopamine. That's not how it works. I mean, yes, dopamine receptors go off in your brain in response to certain stimuli, but... <laughs> You can't just, this is, this is frustrating, and I'm only, what, 47 seconds in? 47 is my least favorite number, so, maybe that's appropriate for this video. I like to think of myself as a dopamine dealer. Actually, there are dopamine dealers. They're called cocaine dealers and meth dealers, but that's a, another point. <laughs> Depressed isn't the same as being sad. It's a real thing. Oh, I know. It feels like a ton of bricks is your blanket. I know every single argument that people are going to throw at me about how depression is so hard and you can't just beat it and you can't just get over it. Yeah, as someone who personally struggles with depression and knows a lot of other people who do, you can't just get over it. It doesn't work that way. 
yes, it is all in your head in the sense that it is a brain problem, but it's not all in your head in the sense that you can just think yourself out of it. Maybe you enjoy being a victim, or maybe you want to get better. I don't know. Saying depression is hard is not enjoying being a victim. That's, it's not the same thing. Oh my god. Oh my god. This is breaking my brain. <laughs> this is like back when I used to do response videos regularly. Like, just the stuff people say will just break your brain. <laughs> Doctors are taught to prescribe antidepressants the same way they're told to prescribe Ritalin to kids with ADD. ADD. We all know what I think about that. So her point is that antidepressants are over-prescribed uh, and it's similar to Ritalin being prescribed with kids with ADD and then she put ADD in quotes like it doesn't exist or something. First of all, ADD does exist. And regardless what you think about things being overprescribed, I don't know how much you can apply that to antidepressants. I mean, I haven't heard of depression being something that's overdiagnosed, although I could be wrong about that. Um, but I mean, antidepressants aren't the solution to anything, to everything anyway. They, they're just part of the of recovering from depression. You take antidepressants and you do therapy that's the efficient way to treat mental illnesses through medications and therapy. Antidepressants are not lifelong tools. They will never make you happy. When I was on antidepressants, I just felt like a robot who was now functioning versus a robot that was frozen. Antidepressants, please. You're still a tin man, just moving now. She said, I felt like I was a robot that was functioning versus a robot that was frozen. So first of all, it sounds like she experienced depression, which confuses me because she clearly doesn't know anything about it. And second of all, it sounds like they did help her. Antidepressants did help her to some extent, is what she's admitting to. And yes, antidepressants are not cure to everything, and they can have side effects that I have myself experienced, and they're not fun to have. Antidepressants, and especially antipsychotics, um, can have quite the side effects, but that's part of dealing with that medication. Like, would you rather have the condition or would you rather deal with the side effects and balancing that and balancing your dosage, dosages? And these are all complex things that you would probably need to talk to a psychiatrist about to get a good balance of medications that works for you and a good range of therapy that works for you. Being high isn't feeling better. Being high isn't feeling better? Since when did antidepressants ever make you feel high? Maybe if you abuse them or something, but... I've never heard of antidepressants making you feel high, unless she's talking about self-medicating with drugs to make you feel high if you have depression, then yeah, you shouldn't be doing that, but that's, that's a completely different thing. And I think there's something really scary about taking away people's ability to feel, which is what antidepressants do. Antidepressants don't necessarily make you take don't necessarily take away your ability to feel. I did experience some emotional bunting when I first started antidepressants, but that's not necessarily what they'll do. They can have any range of side effects which you may or may not get. And scientists have concluded after decades of studies that they have no idea why antidepressants work on some people and not on other people. But the reason is it's all in your head. It's all in your head. Literally. You idiot, it's genetic. <laughs> nope. It was proven at Harvard that only 10% of our long-term happiness has anything to do with external factors, such as genetics. Genetics are not external factors. Only 10% was due to external factors. Genetics are not an external factor. Genetics are within that 90%. You idiot. Oh my god. How is are genetics an external factor? They're an internal factor. And yes, depression runs in families. So it clearly has something to do with genetics. It's not entirely caused by genetics, but it has something to do with them. How you were raised or what's going on at work. By the way, I agree. Sally is such a bitch. She's kind of a bitch. And the other 90% of our happiness is accounted to how we process the world. Hey. <laughs> Yes, happiness is a choice, but that's based on how you live your life. That's not, that has nothing to do with depression. If, you, if you're trying to create happiness in your life, that's a whole different journey you have to go on that doesn't have to do with whether you've been 
diagnosed with depression or not. Obviously, depression can get in that way of reaching happiness, but it's not... It doesn't... Finding happiness in your life is not the same as what medical conditions you have. Isn't that amazing? Happiness can be a choice. Science proves it. Nobody is happy all the time. But it really is up to us if we're happy most of the time. Depression is real, but it's also really beatable. And we need to start advertising that more than the fact that it's a disease. Yeah, yeah. Here are my four steps on how to defeat depression. By the way, Pfizer and Big Pharma, they don't want you to know this stuff. So if you could, shh, so I don't get assassinated. Dodging Pfizer bullets like, whoo, whoo. Thanks. <laughs> Why do you act like you're the expert on depression here and you know the ways to get over depression even? <laughs> even licensed psychiatrists and psychologists don't know how to get over depression. You know, it's not that easy. Step one, you gotta keep it real. Go inside and figure out what haven't I processed that's doing this. You're in a job you hate surrounded by people you don't like. You're with a partner that you know isn't good for you. Your friends are a bunch of Dicks. <laughs> You're depressed because you stopped listening to yourself. Go back to the voice. Not the show on NBC, although it's amazing. I, I can't mentally process this level of stupidity right now. So she says, go and find what is not working out in your life, and that somehow gets over depression. First of all, what if you can't get out of that circumstance? What if you can't change your job for some reason? Um, and second of all, even if you can, that doesn't necessarily change whether you're going to be depressed or not. I just want to be in that spinny chair like just once. Just hear someone's voice and just be like, ping. Oh, look, it's Adam. We will fight to the death. Challenge accepted. You got this. I felt more depressed when I tried to be like other people and tried to fit in with other people at the club, standing against the walls, just like... Why is it popular to act like you're not having fun? That is ridiculous. Keep it real. Step two, positive habits. Science confirms that these following things will help you defeat, treat, and get out of depression. Exercise. Go to the gym, go to a dance class, get out walking, just keep it moving. I swear you will feel happier. Ay, ay. Mm -hmm. Yes, exercise does help with depression in the short term, but in terms of long-term treatment, it's more complicated than just that. Compliment people. You automatically feel good when you see their reaction of feeling good. It is a wonderful drug that you should use all the time. You can't OD on it, and it's free. Dodging Pfizer bullets. By the way, you look great today. <laughs> Cheer for people! Every day I like to cheer for someone. Send them a Facebook message. Just do something that I know is gonna make somebody else happy and it instantly makes me happy. So secretly it's really selfish. I don't care! <laughs> you have to cut out the bad stuff. Keep it real. When I made the decision to not be depressed anymore, which by the way, it's a decision. No, it's not a decision not to be depressed anymore. It's a decision to try and find your own happiness, yes, but you can't just decide your way out of a medical condition. You can decide to start recovering from a medical condition, but that's like me saying that I can make a choice not to have migraines anymore. It, no. I had to cut out a lot of shit. We all know people who complain constantly. Don't get me wrong. I have gone on complain a -thon. Such a bitch. She's coming. When you are in pain, it feels good to complain. But when you're in pain, Complain equals more pain. It doesn't help. When you're depressed, bad news is like fucking crack. You can't get enough of that ish. So is talking trash about other people. Ooh, when you're depressed, it feels good to talk trash about other people. You're like, I want you to get down to my level right now. <laughs> No, nope. it is impossible to watch the news and horror movies and CSI and people being raped and tortured and in pain and be happy yourself. Wait, that makes no sense. So watching bad stuff makes you feel depressed? If you're depressed, you're gonna see... If you're like really seriously depressed, you're gonna see everything as, as bad. It's just you have like a... You're almost like a filter that you're looking through of seeing everything as negative. It's not watching negative stuff that makes you depressed. Oh my god. Stop eating garbage. Pay attention to the way you actually feel after watching those shows. I guarantee you're gonna feel more anxiety and depressed and maybe even have a hard time sleeping. Garbage. You can't consume garbage and expect to be healthy. Sure, yeah, eat better. That's, that's a good tip, but that really doesn't have much to do with depression. This picture not to go the grouch and it made me happy. He's such a grumpy old dick. Garbage. Step three, find something to be excited about. Going on a vacation, meeting up with friends, because that is fantastic. It's proven that the more social we are and the more connected, like really connected to people we are, which goes back to keeping it real, eh, depression levels automatically 
decrease. I'd like to see your sources on that. I mean, yes, going out and interacting with people instead of isolating is a good tip when you're depressed. But again, it's not the cure for depression. Getting excited also has to do with gratitude. Three things you're thankful for every day. I swear it will change your life. Just write them in your phone. Today, I am thankful for this phone. Except for when um, Apple puts out a new phone and this phone will suddenly not work. Odd timing, Apple. Oh, you admitted to it now. We're not upset about that anymore. I'm also thankful for my sparkly nails and the Asian ladies who do them. And I know, secretly, make fun of me. I'm not sure I'm good at this, but I'm trying. And step four, make the decision that you are no longer depressed. The doctor can't fix you. You have to fix you. You are 90% of that treatment. Again, the, the 90% is internal factors, not you yourself making any decision. And yes, you can make the decision to recover, like I said, but you can't make the decision to be depressed or not in the first place. It's a medical condition like any other medical condition. You can fix you. I fixed me. And I took steps every single day, like someone training for a marathon to get better. And then I did. Stop telling people that you're depressed. No, you're not. You're better every day. Hey, you got this. It's all in your head. It's all in your head. Holy fuck. Bunch of dicks. So that's pretty much the end of this video. As you can see, it made me pretty annoyed. Uh, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.